Today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about extrema. And we've talked about extrema in the relative sense back in Algebra 1 was the beginnings of it, but more specifically in Algebra 2 and Precalculus. And we talked about the relative maximum, relative minimum. Today we're going to talk about the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum. And those are going to be the highest or lowest possible value on a given interval. So extrema, again, some definitions if we want to go through those. Extrema is the highest or lowest value that a function for a function on a given interval. The absolute maximum is the absolute highest it can go. Our graph is going to go from increasing to decreasing. The absolute minimum is going to go from decreasing to increasing. So if we think about a graph, that maximum is going to occur where our graph goes from increasing to decreasing. And that maximum is going to occur at that highest point. Where our minimum is going to go from a decreasing interval to an increasing interval. And it's going to happen where that change occurs. So where does that graph change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing? And we think back about our derivatives and what we know about our curve sketching. It's happening when we have a horizontal tangent line. And a horizontal tangent line is going to occur when the derivative is equal to zero. So this is all going to go play back into our calculus and our derivatives. So to be able to find our extrema, um, we're going to find those critical points. Remember, we find those critical points. We find when the derivative is equal to zero. And we're also going to look to see what the endpoints are. So we want to make sure that the endpoints are included and any points within the interval that's given to us <clears throat> that the derivative is equal to zero. We're going to find the value of each of those critical points. The largest value is going to be the absolute maximum, and the smallest is going to be the absolute minimum. So let's go ahead and look in an example to see what we're going to be asking you to do. For our extrema here, we have x to the third minus 3 halves x squared on the interval from negative 1 to 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and find my critical points. My critical points, again, are going to come from when the derivative is equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and find my first derivative. In this case, I have 3x squared minus 3x. I'm going to go ahead and take that, set it equal to 0 to figure out where I have my horizontal tangent lines. I can go ahead and factor out a 3x, and I get x minus 1 equal to 0. Setting each of these equal to 0, I get x equal to 0 and x equals 1. So I've got two critical values. The next thing I want to do is make sure that these two critical values are on this interval from negative 1 to 2. Since they are, I'm going to go ahead and find f of 0, f of 1, so the value at my two critical points of the original function, and the value at those endpoints of my interval, so f of negative 1 and f of 2. And with this, it doesn't bother me that you use a calculator with it. Um, we can go ahead and put that into the calculator. Recalling, you can go to y, or y equals, we can type in the original function, so we have x to the third, um, minus 3 halves x squared. And then what I would do again, um, remember back from Algebra 2 and uh, Precalculus, we did the table function. So if, make sure that your table setup is on ask. So if we come down to the independent variable, hit ask, and then we can go into our table, and that will allow us to go ahead and type in these numbers, and it will give us out the y value. So if I type in 0, I get 0. If I type in 1, I get negative 1 half. If I type in negative 1, I get negative 2 and a half, or negative 5 halves, and 2 is going to give me 2. So my absolute maximum is going to occur at the highest value here. So that's going to be 2. So I have an absolute maximum at x equals 2. So that was my x value. Um, I could also say, or at the point 2, 2, since my x value and my y value. I can also say the absolute maximum is 2, which is the y value. So a lot of different things that we can ask and a lot of different things that you can, the way you can present your answer. So you got to be careful on, on the verbiage of the question. So I can say it's the absolute maximum at x equals 2. 
or at the point 2, 2, or I can say the absolute maximum is y equals 2. Our minimum is going to occur at the lowest point, which is going to be negative 2 and a half. So again, we have an absolute minimum at x equals negative 1, our x value, or at the point negative 1, negative 5 halves, that's a negative there, or the absolute minimum is y equals negative 5 halves. So you got to, again, watch what this, see what the question is asking. And that's, that's basically what we've got here. Here we have a rational expression, so we can go ahead and find the derivative of that. With this one, I would bring this whole denominator to the numerator and do a chain rule with it. So I would set that equal to x minus 2 to the negative first. So my derivative, or if you want to use chain rule, you can use chain rule. But our derivative here is negative 1, x minus 2 to the negative second times 1, which is negative 1 over x minus 2. Go ahead and set that equal to 0. If I set that equal to 0, x minus 2, that goes over, multiplies 0, gives me 0, I get negative 1 equals 0, which doesn't make sense. Now if we, oh, there's a 2 there. If we think about our curve sketching, we took the derivative, or the denominator, also equal to 0. Well, what do we know about the denominator equaling 0? We know that that's going to be undefined. Since x equals 2 is undefined, we know that that's going to be an asymptote with this rational function. So we don't really need to necessarily worry about that. Also, we generally will see that this asymptote is going to occur outside of the interval that's given. So just a couple things um, to watch out for there. So here we're just going to be looking at the two endpoints. So f of 0 and f of 1. Don't necessarily need a calculator for this one. We can plug in the 0. We get negative 1 half. If I plug in negative or plug in one, I get negative one. So our minimum, our absolute minimum, is going to occur at x equals one or the point one negative one, or it is negative one. And our maximum is going to occur at zero negative one half. And there's our answer. Got a couple, just a couple more examples here. Here I've got. 2x minus 3x to 2 thirds on the interval of negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to find my first derivative, which we get 2 minus, uh, well, we got 2x to the negative 1 third. I'm going to set that equal to 0. To go ahead and find, or setting this equal to 0, solving for x, I'm going to take my negative exponent, take it to the bottom. So we get 2 minus 2 over x to the 1 third equal to 0. Find a common denominator, so that gives me 2x to the 1 third minus 2 equal to 0. And that's all over x to the 1 third. I'm going to go ahead and solve. I'm going to multiply my x to the 1 third over, so I get 2x to the 1 third minus 2 equal to 0. Oh, adding 2 over, dividing by 2, I get x to the 1 third equals 1. If I cube both sides, I still get x equals 1. Another critical value here, x to the negative, or x to the 1 third, setting that equal to 0, I get x equal to 0. So again, just because we have a denominator doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to have something out of it because we don't have a rational expression that we started with up here. So we can go ahead and then find, make sure these critical values are on that interval, and they are. So I'm going to find f of my two end values, f of negative 2 and f of 2, and also the critical values that I found over here, f of 0 and f of 1. Again, I'm going to go ahead and be lazy and put this into the calculator. I can clear that out. So I have my 2x minus 3x to the... Um, if you put in a fractional exponent, make sure you put that into parentheses. So we have 2 divided by 3. And we're going to go ahead and do our table. Negative 2 gives me negative 8, 7, 6, 2. 2 is going to give me a negative 0 0.762. 0 is going to give me 0. And 1 should give me a negative 1. So our maximum here, it looks like it's going to occur at 0, 0. 
absolute maximum. And our absolute minimum is going to occur here at negative 2. Alright, and then these other two points are just going to be relative extrema. And last but not least, this one looks like an easy one. That's why I want to go over it, just to see what happens with it. So we have 2x minus 2 minus 3, or x squared minus 2x minus 3 on the interval from 0 to 4. So again, I'm going to go ahead and find the derivative there. And we get x equals 1. Again, I'm going to check and make sure that 1 is on that interval. In this case, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and find f of 0, f of 4, and f of 1. If I plug in 1, I get 1. Minus 2, which is negative 1. Minus 3 gives me negative 4. 4 gives me 16, 8, 5, and 0 gives me a negative 3. So our absolute maximum is here. And our absolute minimum is going to be here at 1, negative 4. Again, um, I didn't give you an example. I thought I had an example in here, but I didn't. Um, be careful. Make sure that this number here is on the interval that we're working with up here. If it's not, we don't, we don't use it. Um, so if um, I could change this problem around, I guess, I, guess I, w I really want to do that. Um, if I change this example, I'm going to throw another example in at you. Um, x squared plus 2x minus 3. If I find the derivative of that, very similar up there, I guess, 2x plus 2, setting that equal to 0, I get x equals a negative 1. So in this case, negative 1 is not on an interval 0 to 4. So I would only find f of 0 and f of 4. f of 0 in this case would give me negative 3, and f of 4 would give me 16, 24, 21. So I would have an absolute maximum here and an absolute minimum here. And that would be an example of where we would not use one of the critical values that we found from the derivative because it's not on that closed interval. So there you go. So there's your extrema. Again, remember, we're going to find the derivative. We're going to set it equal to 0, find those critical values. And then we're going to find the value of the function, of the original function, at any of those critical points that are on the interval and the endpoints of that interval. Good luck, enjoy, and happy deriving.